Well, welcome to the first Axonar production log. I'm Alec Peters, executive producer of Axonar, and here with me is... I'm Robert Burnett, the editor of Axonar and sort of the all-around Boy Friday. <laughs> I don't know about that. I just do what needs to be <laughs> Star, done. Star Trek geek extraordinaire. That's... Writer, director of Free Enterprise. If, uh, if You hopefully have all seen that great movie. And producer of The Hills Run Red. You should watch that because that stars Janet Montgomery who's in Salem and now works for Brandon Braga. So there is an official Star Trek, Star Trek connection, sort of. So this is, this is our first video log and it really is to inform the fans who don't listen to our podcast. We have a weekly Axonar podcast, which hopefully some of you listen to, and uh, we give a lot of great information out. But now we're in our own facility, Aerie Studios, which you all help put together, and we want to start really following what's the progress in Aerie Studio, what's the progress on Axonar, and give you all that information. And the easiest way to do is to show you. Well, as you can kind of see, uh, we're very much in process here. This is going to be the offices. Your offices, right down there. All the way at the far end. Uh, these offices will be uh, where, where the production offices for Axonar and any other movie that we make here at yep. Area Studios uh, happen. And then we're going to have a green room. There's going to be a lounge. Yep. This will all be a very functioning studio space soon. So this is the second floor of the offices at Area Studios. The first floor is our lobby area. It's our editing bay, the home of Robert Meyer Burnett here. And uh, in construction are six dressing rooms, a makeup room, and a wardrobe room. Up here are the offices. At the far end will be uh, my office, as long with the, which will incorporate a conference area. We have six small offices up here. Uh, those of you who know our f director of fulfillment, Diana Kingsbury, will have an office. Uh, Jared Hunt, who is the stage manager, will have his, his office up here. Uh, actually, we are kind of straddling both the proper costume lockup as well as the fulfillment room. So fulfillment room where all you guys get your great perks who donated to the Axonar Kickstarters. And downstairs we actually have the soundstage floors being put on the concrete floor of the warehouse. Right, exactly. And that is going to be, a, it's a sound baffling floor that's being put in uh, that will stop, curtail the echo that happens. And then there'll be sound baffling on the walls and also on the ceiling. And that's Absolutely. being laid down. And then as soon as the floor is down, sets uh, begin construction. Absolutely. The floor also allows us to, to literally nail our sets into the floor uh, and screw them down and, and hold them. And that's really important. So yeah, so there's, uh, things, are, things are moving along well. We just hired an architect, which you need for permitting when you're doing what's called TI, tenant improvement in an in office space like this. So you know, we're probably 60 days away from having our offices done up here and having everything done in the, in downstairs. And yesterday we had pretty exciting a production meeting. Absolutely. With our director of photography, our production designer, our uh, line producer. Yeah, Mike Demerit. Uh, uh, all Christian, our director. And uh, discussing about we're going to do now, it looks like two different shoots. Right. So um, everyone's been like, when do you start shooting Axonar? And what we've been doing is there's a lot of things that have had to happen. Uh, and the most important of which was getting a studio to shoot it in, which we now have. So uh, now we start the process. Christian and I are really close to handing the script off to Mike Demerit uh, for budgeting. So once we have what's a locked script, and that doesn't mean it's not gonna change. Basically it means all the characters and all the sets are in there. And we know, ex and, and the only thing that's gonna change in the script is the dialogue. So we may say, ah, oh, let's say it this way, or let's yeah. get rid of this guy's line or whatever. But all the sets, the way the flow of the, uh, of the script is the same. So Christian and I have two more sessions on that, and then we're, we're done. We're, real, we're just start cutting right now. And it um, goes to Mike Demerit, and then Mike will budget it. He will break down the script. And schedule it. And schedule it, and come and tell us, this is going to cost us X amount of dollars, which is better than what I did a year ago, which is like, we can make this movie for 350 grand. Well. No, we can't. <laughs> because the big change is that we made Prelude to Axonar, and now we've kind of set a standard where everyone expects studio quality Star Trek from us. And in order to do that, well, it means you bring in pros and you have to pay everyone. I mean, the payroll alone is going to be $250,000 for this production. Well, also, I mean, it's, it's one thing to have uh, one character, one actor sitting down in a chair right. shooting with two cameras against a green screen. Now we're gonna have actual sets and shooting coverage 
which means you as an actor are going to have to run one scene from f- 10 different angles and Absolutely. it takes a long time and it's a very different animal making Absolutely. a movie is a very very different different animal it's much bigger and people don't even understand two people in the frame like yesterday we were we even went on a brief location scout yeah, yesterday we did location scouting people uh, had said i thought the whole movie was set on a spaceship no it is not it is it is not it's not it I is mean, a very big movie yeah, I mean, it's kind of, in a lot of ways, it's like Star Trek VI. If you just go, oh, well, you know, you're in, you're at Starfleet headquarters. Oh, you're at Ruripenthe. Oh, you're at a peace conference. Oh, you're in an inside and an outside of a peace conference. You're, right. you're on different ships. You're on Klingon ships, right? You, you see at least two different Klingon ships. You're you on see, a glacier. Uh, yeah, you're on two different Federation ships. And that's kind of what we've, we've, we've you're done. You're on a Klingon uh, court of law. That's right. So there's all those different things. And um, Star Trek VI is actually a good... Indicator. I mean, if of what acts Axonar is very Star Trek Six esque. Absolutely, it is. And as we've talked about on our podcast, uh, when, when you see Axonar, there you will want to go back and watch Star Trek Six again because you will see Star Trek Six from a whole new perspective. You'll go, that's why so and so is doing so and so, and you know, you, it really, without saying anything. Once we get the budget back from Mike Demerit. Uh, then we're going to really be able to know, well, how much money do we need to raise uh, to, to, to do this movie? So the last Kickstarter we did for Axnar, when you go back, if you go back to the Kickstarter, because that was a while ago, and actually read what we told you we were going to be spending the money on. The first thing we said we were going to spend money on was a, a st- soundstage. And uh, at the time, we thought it would be about $125,000 for the first year. It turned out to be $182,000 for the first year because we one, it cost a little more. We got a little bigger space. Um, it was, it's very tough to get real estate up here in Valencia. I mean, the... the, the uh, and here, it's a lot cheaper than it is oh, in L.A. We couldn't even think about doing it in L.A. We're a no. half hour north of Universal Studios. Yes. Um, and uh, so up here... But the occupancy rate, the... Uh, the it, Everything was, I think, 97% of all space up here is occupied. So when something came on the market, we, we had... Well, it we took actually, months. You thought we were going to be able to get... You, 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 we I also had, had start and stops. You found various facilities that you thought, yes, we've got it, and then we didn't. Yeah. As a matter of fact, during the Kickstarter, we had a facility, and I had a lease in my hand. And it was going to cost us $6,000 a month for 20,000 square feet. And, and what happened was we got that lease, and the company that whose space it was had just had the FDA improve their inhalable insulin. And so the next day, a a Chinese company bought them. And the day after that, I pick up the lease in the morning and to review it. And the afternoon, the guy calls me and says, sorry, the new bosses in China say, don't rent anything. And we literally in the middle of our Kickstarter, we lost that space, which was, so then it took us, took me six months basically uh, five months, I guess it was, to uh, to find space, and we had two spaces that were great. Right. Both of them, we were in application, and they wouldn't give us the uh, because of credit reasons. Because basically, they said, "Oh, well, you, wait, wait, hang on, not because you had bad credit." No, because we had no. Because Action Art Productions is brand new. Brand new. We had no right? credit. Oh, we had no credit, so they uh, so we couldn't get it. So then. This space comes on the market, which ironically is exactly like the other two, because it was built by the same builder. So we knew the space, we knew what was good. It was Vaguely in the same it, neighborhood. Roughly in the same neighborhood. And, um, and it literally came on the market on a, say it was a Tuesday. My realtor says, hey, this space just came on the market. We were in here the next day, met the owner, yeah. he loved us. He was like, movies, I love movies. <laughs> My son's a, a rap artist or something. And we, you know, and uh, they go together. Yeah, and he said, uh, and we hit it off. We made him a ridiculous. Basically, we prepaid a year's worth of rent, which is unheard of in in, in the business. And uh, we said we'll prepay, and we had to give him three months security deposit. So we wrote a check. I wrote a check for one hundred and eighty-two thousand dollars, which was the first year's uh, rent and security deposit. So we paid that. So that was much more than we expected. Right. And then we had like fifty thousand dollars for uh, improvements to the soundstage. Well, it's going to be twice that. Uh, you know, and then we have, it's going to cost, uh, I'm not sure how much, $40,000 or so for the offices, the makeup rooms, the dressing rooms, all of that, because now we have to bring in more air conditioning and you have to do it to code and you have to hire an architect. And, and this also, you should point out that this is still cheaper 
than if we rented an existing an existing facility. It's just like if you rent camera equipment. You can buy your own camera equipment. Like now, cameras are affordable. Whether you get a Red or an Alexa, it's cheaper to buy your camera if, yeah. than rent a camera for six or eight or ten months. Yeah. If we were going to rent a this, if we were to rent the same stage that we shot Prelude on, but rent it for six months, how much would that cost? Well, I, I looked at a soundstage that was smaller than what we have here at Valencia, at, at the San Clarita Studios, the big studios up here in Valencia. They have like 20 sound stages, half of them are warehouses that were converted just like this. And for, I want to say it was only about 10,000 square feet plus, plus offices. Um, you can hear the banging down yeah, the warehouse. Work, there's work <laughs> happening right now. But that sound stage, which would, we would, would needed that thing, was 35 grand a month. So you think two months of set building, a month to shoot, a month to tear down, that's four months. You're, you know, right there, you're spending 140 grand and you have nothing to show for it outside of those four months. Right. Well, and also we would then have to take our sets down. That's right. We and couldn't we would... leave them up in case if we needed to do reshoots or if we needed to do something else or have people come, right. have our open the doors so the donors can come see the sets. Or we couldn't do sci-fi film school. We couldn't do Axicon, two of the events that we've talked about. We're going to be doing a film school here this, hopefully this summer. It'll be probably like four or five days and you'll be able to come up and there'll probably be multiple tracks. You want to be a, you know, a director, you want to be a, an actor. And everyone from, from Axonar will take part in that. You'll be teaching a class on directing and editing. You know, Christian will teach a, uh, with, uh, with you on directing. We'll have Richard Hatch and Gary Graham teach acting classes. And uh, it'll be awesome. You know, that's right. And then that will lead into Axicon, a three day Star Trek convention. Uh, where you'll actually be able to hang out on the sets and film on the sets. We, everyone who's been in this film school have created stuff that we'll use, and you'll be able to come and just it will be Star Trek Fantasy Camp. Right, which yeah. is which is great. I mean, and also it will allow us to make other Star Trek productions and continue the world of or, or that time period, Absolutely. Uh, the yeah. post four years war time period, like yeah. the Reconstruction. Yeah, of, yeah. Of the Klingon Federation Alliance and the and and the yeah the not, early not voyages alliance. the early voyages of the Enterprise under Robert April. I mean, we have lots of opportunities. We can go back into the Four Years' War and tell you know tell an anthology where we tell Sonya's story one week and Sam's story the another week and you know and Garth's story and then and find other characters and bring them in and I, I just the the sky's the limit. Yeah, and I I, I think that what's interesting is no one's ever really done this. No. I mean, in a way, it's kind of like when I used to work at Full Moon Entertainment. We made like the Puppet Master movies. There was Puppet Master One, Puppet Master Five. You know, then there was Demonic Toys versus Doll Man. <laughs> you know, and, but we were able to make a movie a month, and I think that's what we would want to do: is ultimately be able to produce not just Star Trek, but all kinds of movies. Absolutely. As long as it's uh, great, as long as we're telling yeah. great stories and, and uh, genre fare that people can watch, that's cerebral, that's interesting, that is not insulting and, and hopefully um, uh, will be a very high co quality product that we can put out here on a regular basis. Yeah, and listen, I think people al already have given us so many compliments because they trust us to make Star Trek now. Um, and we want, you to, you know, we want you to watch other things besides our Star Trek. But uh, Star Trek's obviously near and dear to our hearts, and uh, so we love it. Well, it's also a great way, I mean, in terms of an incubator for how we're going to do things. I mean, a lot of... Actually, I think all the movies that we'll make are a genre in some way, shape, or form. Whether they're science fiction or horror, they're going to require visual effects. We've already proven on a limited budget what we can do. Yeah. And imagine on, on bigger budgets, I mean, say budgets of, say, a million or two million, which is where we're going to be working eventually, uh, what we can do for that money. We right. can make a movie that looks like it's $10 million or $20 million right. based on the team that we were able to put together here and that will continue to work out of here. I mean, no one's, no one's ever had that. You always have to sort of start over. And now we have a facility that we can work out of. Not just for us. We want to have other filmmakers come in and be able to work out of the sure. facility as well. As long as their projects uh, meet with our rigid <laughs> yeah. standards of quality. Yeah, And we'll also just be renting out the soundstage. Right. For people who just want to rent, rent a soundstage and, and do it at a reasonable rate. Because we have lots of friends in the industry and they're always looking for... Unless, just like we were looking last year for space. You know, it would have been amazing if we had Prelude, you know, we could have done Prelude in a space like this and not paid, you know, three, four grand a day, which is what we paid for, for right. back, then, back then for the soundstage space. And we've got a lot more 
we have a lot more facility here than, than we had on Prairie. Oh my gosh, yeah. I mean, that was a quarter of the facility yeah. that, that we have here. So that is good. So in addition, so those are some of the expenses that we've been meeting. Um, obviously, we've bought a lot of equipment as well. We bought a camera that we're shooting this video log on uh, and all the accoutrement uh, for yeah, an new, edit bay. We new uh, editorial equipment. New, my computer that I was using was literally six years old. Yeah, and, and so uh, we have a new computer, new monitor, everything. So, uh, which is great because the DP and the, and the, the director are excited and, uh, because we will literally be able to shoot and then well, as, as the stuff comes off the set, those little data cards go right into you. Yeah, and I mean, I, I will literally be editing every day. Yeah, D Bing Bailey, who's our DIT, who's brilliant, will be ingesting all that data and then spitting out in a form for you, and you'll be putting things together. So, which is really ideal if you don't understand the workflow of a movie. Being able to, at the end of the day, see everything you've done, which remember in the old days you couldn't do because of film, now you can do, and, and, and it gives the de editor the ability to see what's come up and if he misses something or something didn't work, hey, the next day, the, if he can fit it into the schedule, he can he, he can do it. Oh, and I'll be doing assemblies, scene assemblies, so we can actually look at finished, I mean, not finished, but roughly put together scenes based on, and then Christian can go, I like this take or I didn't like this take, we'll have circle takes and we'll be able to construct as we go. So here are the different ways you can be following Axtar. Uh, we will be releasing this on a weekly basis. So every week there'll be a new Axtar production lock. We're going to have guests starting, uh, starting the next uh, episode. Christian will be on, Charlie Lazarica, and then all the crew will come on and uh, hopefully the cast too. So this is the first, uh, first way you can follow us. A lot of you have been following us through the past 20 episodes of the Axtar podcast that we've done. That's another weekly podcast that we do. So if you like listening to us, Action our podcast, and you can find that on trek.fm. Uh, and then our Facebook pages. There's the Action R page, the Action R fan group. If you want to talk about Action R, uh, those are great ways. And our and our website, actionrproductions.com, where you will find not only our blog but also the new captain's log. Where on a daily basis, I post photos and tell you what's going on every single day on Action R. So the whole goal of this is to keep you fully informed about what we're doing, what you've donated money to, and, and, and uh, what, why we're going to ask you for more money. And also, it is an ongoing concern. Uh, you don't have to wait for any future Kickstarters. You can donate to the Axonar project now. A lot of you donated to the Axonar Kickstarter, but not the Prelude Kickstarter. And we're, we're, you know, we're coming out with this amazing Blu-ray that you're working that on. That I'm working on, feverishly. Uh, oh, the graphics just look... And I have to say, without naming names, in addition to Rob, who's one of the top Blu-ray guys in Hollywood, we have two of the top people who do graphics, menus, authoring. and the authoring of these Blu-ray. Two of the top guys in Hollywood are working with Rob um, because they love our project so much. So we are putting out a prelude Blu-ray that will blow you away. It's studio quality. It is. On uh, every level. And so you, if you donate the Axonar Kickstarter, you never were, had the chance to donate and get the Prelude Blu-ray. And you can go to our website, actionartproductions.com or StarTrekActionArt.com, and just there's donor resources. And if you scroll down on donor resources, you'll see retroactive donor packages. And you can go in and donate and get uh, Prelude to Axonar Blu-ray, which is not only Prelude to Axonar, uh, but it's also a half hour documentary that you've done. Making up behind the scenes. Uh, there'll be an audio commentary. Right. Watch it too. There's the trailers and there's a few other goodies on there. Yeah, so it's it's going to be a must-have for any Star Trek fan. So those are the ways you should stay in touch. Look for our, our next Axonar production log where we'll have special guest Christian Gossett. And uh, we'll see you out there. That way. You're at Starfleet headquarters. Oh, you're at Ruripenthe. Oh, you're at a peace conference. Oh, you're on the inside and an outside of a peace conference. You're, right. you're on different ships. You're on Klingon ships, right? You, you see at least two different Klingon ships. You're on you a see, glacier. Uh, yeah, you're on two different Federation ships. And that's kind of what we've, we've, we've you're done. You're on a Klingon uh, court of law. That's right. So there's all those different things. And um, Star Trek VI is actually a good indicator. I mean, if of what Ax Axanar is... Very Star Trek Six esque. Absolutely, it is. And as we've talked about on our podcast, uh, when, when you see Axanar, 
there you will want to go back and watch Star Trek 6 again because you will see Star Trek 6 from a whole new perspective you'll go that's why so and so is doing so and so and you know you, it really, without saying anything once we get the budget back from Mike Demerit uh, then we're going to really be able to know well how much money do we need to raise uh, to, to, to do this movie so the last Kickstarter we did for Axnar when you go back if you go back to the Kickstarter because that was a while ago, and actually read what we told you we were gonna be spending the money on. The first thing we said we were gonna spend money on was a, a soundstage. And uh, at the time we thought it'd be about $125,000 for the first year. It turned out to be $182,000 for the first year, because we want to cost- The movie that we make here at yep. Harry Studios uh, happen, and then we're gonna have a green room, there's gonna be a lounge. Yep. This will all be a very functioning studio space soon. So this is the second floor of the offices at Aerie Studios. The first floor is our lobby area. It's our editing bay, the home of Robert Meyer Burnett here. And uh, in construction are six dressing rooms, a makeup room, and a wardrobe room. Up here are the offices. At the far end will be uh, my office, as long with the, which will incorporate a conference area. We have six small offices up here. Um, those of you who know our director of fulfillment, Diana Kingsbury, will have an office. Uh, Jared Hunt who is the stage manager, will have his, his office up here. Uh, actually, we are kind of straddling both the prop and costume lockup as well as the fulfillment room. So fulfillment room where all you guys get your great perks who donated to the Axe and our Kickstarters. And downstairs, we actually have the soundstage floors being put on the concrete floor of the warehouse. Right, exactly. And that is going to be, a, it's a sound baffling floor that's being put in uh, that will stop, curtail the echo that happens and then there'll be sound baffling on the walls and also on the ceiling. And Absolutely. that's being laid down. And then as soon as the floor is down, sets uh, begin construction. Absolutely. The floor also allows us to, to literally nail our sets into the floor. Uh, and well, welcome to the first Axonar production log. I'm Alec Peters, executive producer of Axonar. And here with me is... I'm Robert Burnett, the editor of Axonar and sort of the all-around Boy Friday. <laughs> I don't know about that. I just do what needs to be Star, done. Star Trek geek extraordinaire. That's... Writer, director, free enterprise. If, uh, if You hopefully have all seen that great movie. And producer of The Hills Run Red. You should watch that because that stars Janet Montgomery who's in Salem and now works for Brandon Braga. So there is an official Star Trek, Star Trek connection, sort of. So this is, this is our first video log and it really is to inform the fans who don't listen to our podcast. We have a weekly Axonar podcast, which hopefully some of you listen to, and uh, we give a lot of great information out. But now we're in our own facility, Airy Studios, which you all help put together, and we want to start really following what's the progress in Airy Studio, what's the progress on Axonar, and give you all that information. And the easiest way to do is to show you. Well, as you can kind of see, uh, we're very much in process here. This is going to be the offices. Your office is right down there. All the way at the far end. Uh, these offices will be uh, where, where the production offices for Axonar and any other... Mike Demerit, and then Mike will budget it. He will break down the script. And schedule it. And schedule it, and come and tell us, this is gonna cost us X amount uh, of dollars, which is better than what I did a year ago, which was like, we can make this movie for 350 grand. Well, no we can't. <laughs> because the big change is that we made Prelude to Axonar, and now we've kind of set a standard where everyone expects studio quality Star Trek from us. And in order to do that, well, it means you bring in pros and you have to pay everyone. I mean, the payroll alone is gonna be $250,000 for this production. Well, also, I mean, it's, it's one thing to have uh, one character, one actor sitting down in a chair, right. shooting with two cameras against a green screen. Now we're gonna have actual sets and shooting coverage which means you as an actor are gonna to have to run one scene from f 10 different angles and Absolutely. it takes a long time and it's a very different animal. Making Absolutely. a movie is a very, very different different animal. It's much bigger and people don't even understand. Two people in the frame. Like yesterday, we were we even went on a brief location scout yeah, yesterday. We did location scouting. People uh, had said, I thought the whole movie was set on a spaceship. No, it is not. It is not. It is, not. It is, not. It is mean, a very big movie. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of, in a lot of ways, it's like Star Trek VI. If you just go, oh, well, you know, you're in, uh, screw them down and, and hold them, and that's really important. So, yeah, so there's, uh, things, are, things are moving along well. We just hired an architect, which you need for permitting when you're doing, 
what's called TI, tenant improvement in a, in an office space like this. So, you know, we're probably 60 days away from having our offices done up here and having everything done in the in downstairs. And yesterday we had pretty exciting a production meeting. Absolutely. With our director of photography, our production designer, our uh, line producer. Yeah, Mike Demerit. Uh, all, all Christian, our director. And uh, discussing about we're going to do now, it looks like, two different shoots. Right. So um, everyone's been like, when do you start shooting Axonar? And what we've been doing is there's a lot of things that have had to happen. Uh, and the most important of which was getting a studio to shoot it in, which we now have. So uh, now we, we start the process. Christian and I are really close to handing the script off to Mike Demerit uh, for budgeting. So once we have what's a, a locked script, and that doesn't mean it's not going to change. Basically, it means all the characters and all the sets are in there. And we know, ex and, and the only thing that's going to change in the script is the dialogue. So we may say, ah, oh, let's say it this way, or let's yeah. get rid of this guy's line, or whatever. But all the sets, the way the flow of the, uh, of the script is the same. So Christian and I have two more sessions on that, and then we're, we're done. We're, real, we're just start cutting right now. And um, goes to 